love's for beginners Ain't no witness, it slips through your fingers I ain't turning around So F all the drama F the karma Just do what you wanna Promise you got time Be you And keep looking forward Don't you look backwards And you'll be fine Come through And say what you need to Don't let them put you down Baby, let me tell you What it feels like Being independent No trouble inside It's like magic Living like a bad bitch Cause baby, you deserve The best in life Let me tell you What it feels like Being no mama Yeah, to yourself right It's like magic Living like a bad bitch Cause baby, you deserve The best in life Come get your future She'll never betray ya She ain't telling no lies So break the glass ceiling Find your meaning Make truth out of dreaming Question. Did you get a chance to meet with the royal family? And if not, how was it like having them there in the building? Jesus, Mary, and Joseph? <laughs> the prince and princess of Wales. Oh, no, I did not. I'm only familiar with one royal family. I don't know too much about that one. Hello everyone and welcome to the Tuesday podcast. Hope everyone is doing well. As always, please don't forget to thumbs up, hit that like button and subscribe so we can get the subscriber numbers up and feed the algorithm. Okay, first things first, before we get straight into it, as um, you may or may not know, in the UK right now, well those of you in the UK will definitely know, (laughs) it is freezing um there's been snow so i have the heater fan on in the background so the first thing i want to know is can you all hear the heater fan and is it annoying or distracting before we start if it's really loud and it's distracting please do let me know so i can just turn it off for the duration of the podcast but if it's not that bad 
then I would rather keep it on. Okay, no background. Oh, fantastic. Okay, thank you so much for that. Right, welcome to the chat, everyone. Um, I don't want to keep us too long because I think Baron's uh, on as well and there's a little bit of overlap. Obviously, we always try our best um, not to um, have overlap with the different Sussex podcasts, but obviously everyone has their own lives and we have to just go live um, when we can go live. So I'm going to try and get through um, ours quickly today um, so we can go hop over and watch everyone else as well. But I hope everyone in the UK is um, keeping warm and um, yeah, it's very unfortunate that some people are going to have to be using food, um, not food bank, well, food banks and warm banks this winter. But what can we do? Pray, help each other, help our communities. And if you do need um, those services, please just do look online. Please don't um, suffer in silence. Right. So let's get uh, straight into it. Omid. Omid dropped a big one today. He dropped the cover art and the title of his upcoming book he announced that he had a deal um some time ago and um here it is cover art and um some information so i'm going to read the statement that was released by his uh uh publishing house so endgame inside the royal family and the monarchies fight for survival to be published globally on August 1st, 2023. After the global success of New York Times bestseller Finding Freedom, the title for Omid Scobie's highly anticipated second royal blockbuster has been announced, Endgame. On September 8th, 2022, the world stood still as news broke of Queen Elizabeth II's passing. Her death dismantled the protective shield around the world's most famous family and saw a long simmering crisis of confidence in the British monarchy begin to surface. Now with unique insight, deep access and exclusive revelations, journalist Omid Scobie pulls back the curtain on an institution in turmoil, exposing the chaos, family dysfunction, distrust and draconian practices threatening its very future. This is the monarchy's endgame. Do they have what it takes to survive? Endgame, which lends its title from the noun used to describe the last part of a strategic game or process will be released simultaneously in print and digital in North America by Day Street Books, an imprint of HarperCollins. Translations will be simultaneously released in a number of overseas territories, including France, Netherlands, and Italy. And an audio version of the book read by the author will also be released. So I did not read Finding Freedom. Um, even even though I, I would say Omid has been the most balanced and fair, I just was not interested in reading anything that was not directly from Harry and Meghan, given all of the negativity and vitriol. So even reading something from someone that was balanced and fair to me I just was not interested um, at the time, but I think Omid continues um, to prove that he is willing to just speak his mind and go against the grain of the so-called official royal reporters at, who are on the rota. And so for that reason, I will definitely be checking out um, Endgame and I'm interested to read what Omid has to say and um, what these so-called insiders have to say about the situation with the monarchy. So that's that. Also, Omid also tweeted this. The first half of Harry and Meghan has been Netflix's biggest documentary debut of all time. A rep says it debuted with 81 million hours viewed by over 28 million households in four days the highest of any doc in a premier week is currently second um Eng it's currently the number two english tv series globally 
Amazing. And yes, Harry and Meghan, we won again. And here are all the territories. Top 10 in TV in 85 countries. There are all the countries. And Netflix translates in multiple languages. I think that there are um, three or four core groups that have watched this documentary series. I think there's the Harry and Meghan fans. The hardcore Sussex squad. I actually think that us hardcore Sussex squad, we are, we're actually the mi minority because or in that larger group of people because we kind of knew what was coming and we're always showing up for our faves anyway. I think the greater majority are the ambivalent, the fence sitters, the Harry and Meghan haters and the individuals who are interested because they want to know gossip about the royal British royal monarchy. And so I think that the firm of having a very hard time acknowledging or admitting that actually there's a lot of people who are watching this because they almost want it to be an expose, some you know bombshell expose about the royals. And I don't think it was ever going to be that. I think it was just Harry and Meghan telling their truth. And there may be parts of that truth that make the royals look bad. But let's face it. If Harry really wanted to expose his family, if he was pushed into a corner, I don't think it would be in some Netflix documentary. I, I just don't. But there you have it, huge success. So all of those who were saying, oh, it's going to flop, it's not going to do well, well, what do you have to say now? I mean, there were literally articles being printed in multiple tabloid publications saying that it was going to flop before we'd even got the numbers in. They're so desperate to have this documentary series, to have Harry and Meghan flop and fail. Right. Oh, um, with Omid's book, by the way, I don't think it's on pre-sale just yet. Right. Also, um, made by article. Um, article were the agency that Harry and Meghan and Archwell hired to make their websites. So they're the ones that uh, maintain the website and I had a look at their uh, jobs board and they do actually have two jobs going one for digital designer and look at the job description amazing founders um, who they work with amazing founders including the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and Archwell so just to let you know if there are any squiddies out there <laughs> who are good at digital design article who work with Harry and Meghan are hiring a digital designer so I spotted that and just wanted to let you know. But to your comments before we continue. Oh, I saw, uh, what's up with Vada? Oh, you have severe heavy storms. Gosh. And tornado. Oh, wow. Please stay safe, hon. I hope you have um good shelter. Praying for you, hon. I hope you're okay. Do let us know that you're okay and that the storm passed when it passes. Hi everyone, if you're just joining us, just scroll down your comments. Ooh. Oh, Boney, your radiator's not working. Oh, I'm so sorry. We should get a fan heater just in case, um, you know, any of your heating or your boiler breaks. And also, go on YouTube and look at natural or cheap ways to heat your home or to insulate your home. There's so many great tips and tricks that you can um, do to preserve heat even t tomorrow actually I just don't have a moment to do it today but I'm gonna put bubble wrap around um, my windows I like even that can help um, putting blankets on the walls 
because these old um english houses some of them aren't very well insulated so there are very cheap things that you can do um to help insulate and heat your home so just use the university of youtube please we don't want anybody suffering and please make sure when you're out and about um, that you're wearing shoes with grips you're being careful don't want anybody slipping over either Joan Commonwealth, I will get the cliff notes for Endgame. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not a bad idea. <laughs> hey, Joyce, you need a book to call out that family. So if it's about the royal family and their tactics, good for Omid. I did buy his first book. It's a good read. There was a bit of criticism about Finding Freedom that actually there wasn't anything too groundbreaking in it. And a lot of it was stuff that was kind of in the tabloids anyway. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't read it, so that's not my judgment. That's just a lot of what I was hearing from others. Uh, Cho de CC. I'm guilty. I did watch it four times to get the nuances and whatnot that comes with it. What the the first half of, half of the Harry and Meghan documentaries. A uh, gift love. The documentary is changing many people's views about the Sussexes. They are being viewed favorably. Yes. I do think there are a few fence sitters who have watched this and just gone, do you know what? I don't uh, care too much about Harry and Meghan, but they just seem like two people who are in love, who want to be in love, who want to raise a family. What's the big deal? That's what I'm getting from a lot of fence sitters. Um, Legs, thank you so much for the super chat. You said, hi, Duchess. They do the same playbook. Whenever anything comes out of from Harry and Meghan, they give an article within the first hours to say that it's flopped. They did the same for Meghan's book, which was a bestseller. Indeed. Indeed, they did do that. And it's beginning to get embarrassing. But thank you so much for the super chat legs. Much appreciated as always. Yes, wishful thinking, Rosalyn, on the haters part. And how can they sit there and say that it's going to flop when they're the ones that give the most PR? People like this. Bethany Frankel, can someone please check on this woman? Can somebody please check that she's okay? Because she's clearly not okay. So she's come out and she said, I felt that this entire documentary was about how famous they are. It was relentless. Excuse me, madam, did anybody force you to watch this? You know, sometimes when I listen to people like Bethany Frankel and I, I see the comments from the haters, you'd honestly think that the ghost of Meghan grabbed these people, tied them to a chair and forced them to watch this documentary, forced them to listen to her podcast. Do you remember those comments that I read out the other day? And a lot of them were along the lines of, oh my God, I need to take a break from Megan. It's hurting me. You know, she keeps doing well and I keep on wanting her to fail and it's just too much. I just need to take a break. There's too much Megan. Her podcast and the show and the book. And it's just like, <laughs> excuse me? You have the right to go and mind your business. And it's like I always say, you know, there's celebrities who I don't like. Like Kim Kardashian. I don't follow Kim Kardashian on, on social media. I don't buy her stuff. I don't listen to her podcast. I don't watch her family show. Nobody is forcing you to pay attention to anybody that you hate. But her haters are her biggest damn fans. And as um, Meech said on Twitter, the fact that these women don't like Megan, but still read every article, watch every show and listen to every podcast she does. Sweetheart, this is fan behavior. You're one of Markle's sparkles, indeed. Remember, this podcast was initially was initially called Markle Sparkle. I don't want to use the Markle name because obviously that's that side of the family. But um, I do like the term Markle's Sparkles. We really are her sparkles. And if you're going to be this obsessed with Megan, then just admit you're a fan. Come over to our side and stop being a hater. Now, Bethany Frankel, all um, well, she claims that she briefly dated uh, Megan's ex, Trevor, and she tried to use that as a means of getting into the press. 
And the problem with uh, revealing yourself to be a hater is that there are those who are listening. So there's this lady called Natalie Rowe. She's an author of a book called Whipping Up a Storm. She claims that she is here to shed light and expose the corrupt Tory government. Boris Johnson is a crook. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. That's Natalie Rowe. I don't know who this lady is, but that's her bio on Twitter. And she came out and said, there's one particular so-called reality star on Twitter that's been running her mouth on Harry Egan. I'm so tempted to pull out a photocopy of one of her, one of the checks her dad spent on the many black escort girls that were at my agency. I literally have the receipts. Literally. And a lot of people thought that she was referring to Bethany Frankel's father and Bethany Frankel. Um, so I think uh, uh, the haters need to learn to sit down. But the reason they don't sit down is because it's profitable to go after Megan, which is why Megan the Kelly has been flapping her gum as well. She has her own podcast reality, uh, sorry, not reality TV, uh, podcast YouTube TV thing going on. And if you go to her channel, a number of them are about our girl, Megan. And she said in her recent one, Harry needs a psychotherapist, not a whiny, woke, annoying wife to overcome emotional trauma of losing his mother. Is Megyn Kelly's husband paying attention to Megyn Kelly? Because why is Megyn Kelly paying attention to Megyn the Markle's marriage? And there seems to be a trend of these type of women who want to speak for the Sussex's marriage, which by all accounts looks hella solid to me. I mean, if you can survive being destroyed by the 2000 year old British monarchy with the MI5 at its disposal, I think your marriage can pretty much survive anything. And there is also a trend of these type of women who end up in their own marital issues not too long after they start flip-flapping and yip-yapping about Meghan. So you have been warned, Meghan Kelly, you may want to go talk to Sarah Vine and Jane Moir, see how it ended for them. Eamon Holmes, who said that he wanted Harry to be thrown over a balcony and then ended up breaking his back himself because karma knows everybody's address. Also, it would appear that the bots are still being released. A uh, Lady Kare uh, Kachiri, I saw this come up on my Twitter feed and she said, is this a bot? Now, um, this Hanadi Youssef, that account was responding uh, to, I think it was a tweet. It was some kind of tweet about Harry and Meghan and the United Kingdom. And look at what it re responded with. This is history, Ottoman, Roman and British. Get cover, it's loser. So the bot are very clearly malfunctioning, some of them. And you can see that this account, it joined on September um, 2022. No avatar, um, just plain, even on the header. These are clear signs of a bot. All the signs of a bot recently made, no avatar, only following three accounts, no followers, barely really tweeting anything, only responding to articles and tweets. Um, about Harry and Meghan and trying and being disparaging, but this one obviously has malfunctioned. So the bots are still very active. And here we have the covers of today's papers following the release of the second trailer. Metro going with, now it's really dirty, Harry. Now it's really dirty, Harry, for speaking your truth, but I'd like to see some of the headlines, if at all there were any, for the Metro, for Andrew. Uh, the Sun also going with Harry's War on Wills and the Daily Express um, going with the line from Harry also about the, the firm being willing to protect 
William, but not him and his wife. But do you know who didn't go for Harry and Meghan on the cover? The Daily Fail. The Rothermere owned Daily Fail. The Got Whipped by Meghan Daily Fail. After last Friday, having 18 articles, sorry, 18 pages, probably 60 articles online, but in the print version, after having 18 pages about Harry and Meghan, Nowhere to be seen on the cover. The day after the trailer was released. I wonder who gave that order. So on Friday, we had a whole cover and 18 pages. But today, we're talking about cooking our Christmas dinner in an air fryer. I wonder who gave the order to tell the Daily Fell not to put Harry and Meghan on the cover. To your comments before we continue. Welcome if you're just joining everyone. Shelia, you've watched it three times already. <laughs> Don't blame me. I actually do want to rewatch it at some point. Melita, by the way what is going on with Megan Kelly and Candace Owens, it seems they can't keep Harry and Meghan out of their mouths. They continue to spread their hate with their followers. It's money, hun. It's the money. Um, nothing makes money like hating on Megan. It's actually wild to me. Um, 1960th. And your opinion on this? Why do they do this to Harry? Do they hate him so much? Um, I just don't understand the hate against his own son brother. There's a lot of elements to this 1960. The fact that Harry mar married a biracial woman, the fact that he has left the firm, the fact that he is, him and Meghan are whistleblowers, the fact that they have, and I don't think it was necessarily their intention to, by the way, let me just say that. I don't think it was their intention to, but by leaving, they have exposed that royal life just ain't all that. They have killed the fairy tale. And they have created their own court and their own fairy tale and their own livelihood and their own family away from the British monarchy. So it's not just um, the monarchy and the firm that is peeved off. I think that there are people who, for whom monarchy and the royals are so much part of their identity that they cannot stand that they had this very, you know, accomplished. Um, outspoken, feminist, American, successful woman come in and show how just utterly useless they are. And again, not because she wanted to, just because her existence as someone who's very accomplished just did that. It highlighted just how useless and lazy they are, Megan being there. And the fact that she got there and did not bow down, was not grateful, um, would not shrink herself. And she didn't have to. Because if you have accomplished so much yourself and you walk into an institution where people have everything they have because of whose vagina they came out of, why should you bow? Why should you be grateful? So there are multiple reasons, 1960, as to why they hate Harry and why they hate Meghan. It's not just one thing. There's a, there's a larger, um, uh, there's a larger narrative at play here. The dynamics within the family, the dynamics of the, within the firm, and remember in all of this, that the royals sit at the top of the class system in the United Kingdom. And without the royals, or without the, the illusion of what they mean, that class system begins to crumble. So that was a very long-winded answer. <laughs> but I hope you kind of understood what I was saying there. Your question could be a whole podcast and discussion itself. And maybe we should actually have that podcast one day. 
Um, all right, let's okay. All your comments about Bethany. Let's just scroll down because <laughs> some of them the, the censors won't let us say them out loud. Uh, legs. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Beth is clout chasing. She's trying to stay relevant. I don't know what she's supposedly famous for, but I don't know her and I don't care. Get a life, indeed. Uh, I she's probably one of these real housewife types. I think. I think. That's my guess. Uh, like I said, you were like, oh yeah, please drop the receipts. I think that she was talking about Bethany. I think so. Yes, Rahini, when your receipts are actual receipts. All right, let's scroll down. Yes, Marina, Megan Kelly is broke. She's desperate. Didn't she get a big payout from Fox, though? But she's used the money already. Oh, dear. We have some trolls in the chat. Thank you so much, Mods, for keeping on top of the trolls. All right. On to the next thing I wanted to mention. All right, this. One of the things I love about the squad is our receipt finding is undefeated. So James O'Brien said, once again, it's absolutely ridiculous for royal correspondents who are the focus of Harry and Meghan's criticism to be providing the, the coverage of Harry and Meghan's criticism of royal correspondents, like asking the accused to provide objective coverage of their own trial. And then Kirk here responded by saying, I can think of few classes of journalists that are worse than royal correspondents. It is the ultimate access journalism, aka propaganda. If they say anything critical, they will be shut out. That's not being a journalist, that's being a publicist. And this clip of Emily Andrews that I think is going to come back to haunt her surfaced. I wish I could show you this, but I'm not too sure if the copyright police will get me for showing it. So I'm going to just play you the sound instead but i wish you could actually see this because her expression and her smugness is just unbelievable but just listen to it because it's very revealing and i had lunch with harry and williams then press secretary and in the story i wrote i said as a, as a line you know that harry and william had fallen out and that, that was one of the reasons they were moving and then a lot of the focus was on kate and megan which was rubbish frankly because actually the falling out wasn't between Kate and Meghan, although perhaps that's more sexy for the girls to be, you know, cat fighting, bitch fighting. Kate and Meghan, I think, were kind of trying to support their husbands. And then a couple of weeks later, I wrote a, a, a big article about um, Bad Blood Brothers, our amazing subs at the sun, um, came up with that um, headline. And I wrote about the about William and Harry falling out and their rift. And that before that was that we printed that on the Saturday. And that week I went out for lunch with Harry and William's press secretary and I said to him, I was gonna write this, I put everything to him. I said that how William in a sort of fraternal way had tried to say to Harry, he didn't say, Don't marry her. He'd said, Are you sure? Things are moving so quickly. It's really difficult marrying into the royal family. Don't 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 go too don't go too quickly. You know, William's a lot more cautious than Harry. Um, they'd fallen out over money. They'd fallen out over positions. Harry had been given these plum positions in the Commonwealth, the Queen's Commonwealth Trust by the Queen. William hadn't. But of course, William's going to be king. He doesn't need to be, but he didn't see it like that. So they'd fallen out over money. They'd fallen out over positions. They'd fallen out over a girl. I had. Okay, so. Multiple things there. First of all, she says, um, press secretary. So she's referring to Jason Knopf at this point. So she's meeting with Jason Knopf. Jason Knopf, who we know, presented text messages and emails to the courts in an attempt to try and help the Daily Fell win Meghan's case, i.e. betraying his client. She also talks about, oh, you know, the whole thing about 
Megan and Kate cat fighting. It's all very sexy. And the way she talks, she's not at all interested. Let me, sorry, let me actually, um, some of you are asking for the video, so let me post the link. But she's not at all interested in truth or actual journalism. She's just interested in gossip. And I don't know, it, it just proves, the fact that she's even meeting with Jason North and relaying what she's going to write and all these stories just proves how controlled the press about the royals is. There's no objectivity here whatsoever. And clearly, Emily Andrews, as many of these royal reporters knows that a lot of the rift was between William and Harry and mostly because of William's um, gardening antics, shall we say. So they know this and yet they still continue to spew all this vitriol about Meghan and focus it on Meghan and oftentimes on Harry as a way of deflecting from the issues with the Wellses. So if you want, if you want to watch the video, um, it's on Twitter and I've posted it there. Okay? Right. Go to your comments before we continue. But it's actually worth watching because it's um, you really get a sense of Emily Andrews' attitude and the attitude of a lot of these royal correspondents when you're actually watching her expressions. Um, Cheryl, Harry and Meghan pulled the curtain and exposed the truth that has been hiding in various palaces for a very long time. It's not, nor ever has it been a fairy tale. It's a show with actors, exactly. It's a show with actors to keep you distracted. You ever watch The Hunger Games? And there's that one part, that one scene where, uh, is it in Catching Fire, where they're going on the uh, Victor tour. And as far as Katniss is concerned, she won the Hunger Games, it's over, right? And then Haymitch says to her, no, your job is to be a distraction, sweetheart, from what the real problems are. And that's basically what the people in the royal family are. They're just actors to keep people distracted. And that is at a complete opposite end to what Harry and Meghan clearly want to do, and that's offer as much service as they can with the privilege and the position that they have. But with the other royals, the job is to um, act like you're giving service show up to all these events, show up for all these PR press calls, but you're not actually doing anything impactful at all. Um, Tling It Maiden, you said they don't understand that Harry could walk away from that institution, that being a royal isn't all that. He could leave and be successful <laughs> is anathe anathema to them. They don't understand. Yes, and I think partly it's because of this bubble that they've created around each other. There was this article, um, or sorry, a snippet from an article that popped up again on my feed. So this is from um, Shipman's article describing William and his aide's jealousy of Harry and Meghan. Lots of leaky courtiers and sources going on the record. The inferiority complex and the toxic nature of it all is just on another level. So part of the article read, setting up a separate office was an acknowledgement that William will be king and Harry will not. And to a degree, a means of reassuring William that his is the constitutional, constitutionally important role. Whatever the public esteem in which Harry and Meghan are held, people are telling William, don't worry, your influence will grow and Harry's will fade. So this is what William is hearing by the men in grey suits. This is what the emperor is hearing while he's walking outside naked. And it doesn't matter how much the... Um, King's men's servants want to delude him. 
Harry's popularity is not fading. In fact, it's growing. How much do you want to bet that they have spun a whole narrative inside those palace walls that Earthflop was hugely successful? Anyway, the article went on to say, to palace officials wondering how to handle the couple, there was another figure who looms large when you think of young women using a royal platform for global charitable crusading, Harry's own mother. The danger to them is that Meghan is going to be bigger than Diana, said one source. Well, I mean, if we're talking uh, pop culture relevance, I think Meghan is already there. I'm not trying to compare her to Diana. I don't think we should compare her to Diana. But if we're just talking about where we are in the social media era, in the pop culture moment, Megan is the moment. So everything they feared came true. Right. Light side, you said the levels and levels and levels of utter shameless vilification of Megan that these people have partaken in is criminal. It is, and it's dangerous. It's really dangerous. Wasn't Emily Andrews actually pushed out from her publication? Was it The Sun or whoever it was she was writing for? Right. Um, moving on from that. Uh, another royal rodent lying, Chris Ship, who often likes to act like he takes the centre of everything, um, like he tries to be balanced. But every so often, he comes out and shows how shady that he is. So he tweeted this saying, Megan criticises the Met Police, saying our security was pulled. Everyone in the world knew where we were. It was institutional gaslighting, says Harry, who also videoed himself leaving the UK. Megan did not criticise the Met Police. When she says our security was pulled, well, yes, the Met police would have been involved in that. So would have Charles. So would have others in the palace. But she did not specifically say the Met police. And as one Twitter commentator who responded to him said, quite rightly, you have zero zip integrity. Remember, I confronted you about your coverage regarding Meghan at The Hague. You told me you were a serious journalist, but here we are. You should be ashamed of yourself. Report the news factually without spinning. You were left in the cold. Yes, a lot of them were left standing outside during the invictus. No access. Access denied. I hope that they're not even allowed in the buildings at all during invictus. I'm sure they'll be trying to get tickets, but I hope that they're not allowed in. If I see myself sitting next to a royal rodent, it will go down. Uh, Reba, Emily Andrews says she was having a lunch with Jason Loft. Sounds very cozy to me. Yes. Wonder what she knows. Wonder what they all know. Right. Um, this was interesting. Jason Knopf is getting some attention. Attention he probably didn't want to have. There was an article that came out in the texasmonthly.com. Now, I haven't read this, but it's been making the rounds, so we're going to read it together and see what it says. So this is by Emily Makula. She says, One thing I've learned in my years covering this state is that there is always a Texas connection, which is, my, which is why I first set up a Google alert for Meghan Markle, Texas, back in January 2020. Meg and her husband had just announced that they'd be stepping down as senior members of the British royal family. Nearly three years later, the royal falling out is still making headlines around the globe. When I first set up my Google alert, I wanted to prove my theory that Texas is the Kevin Bacon of states. And I was right, because eventually I learned about Meghan and Harry's former communication secretary, Jason Knopf, who continued to work with Prince William and Kate Middleton for years after their counterparts drew the coup for Montecito, Canada. Sorry, California, and who was born, of all places, in Huntsville. There are rumours, and as far as I'm aware, they are just rumours. I'm not stating this as fact, but there are rumours about 
NOF's dodgy activities in previous companies. And I wonder if, in light of this documentary, any of that is going to come up. Anyway, it goes on to say, NOF's connection to Texas isn't that strong. According to East Texas paper, The Courier, he only lived here until he was about five. First in Huntsville, then in the Houston suburb of Conroe, where he still has extended family, after which he moved to Virginia. His path from Virginia to Kensington Palace was circuitous. He went to college in New Zealand, where he eventually got a job in the communications department of the Ministry of Social Development. He followed that up with a master's degree in politics and communication from the London School of Economics, where he worked as a press officer for Her Majesty's Treasury. So he's been in these circles for some time, England's Treasury Department, then for the Royal Bank of Scotland until 2015, when he came on board as communication secretary for a company he lists on LinkedIn as simply the Royal Household. Right, so it goes on a little bit. Uh, right, I'm trying to get to the good part. He is the staffer who filed the now infamous HR complaint against Meghan for bullying, which was leaked to the British tabloids. Um, Knopf was described as... Uh, it's likely Knopf was a member of what they described as the firm, a seemingly toxic blend of family and business. Uh, right, let me go down a little bit more. So Knopf doesn't appear on camera in the film, but his face is highlighted in an infographic explaining how the different press offices function within the royal family. Knopf, it seems, is the one who told her she couldn't invite her niece to her wedding because she was the daughter of uh, Meghan's half-sister, Samantha Markle. Right, and it goes on a little bit more. Um, with the Queen dead and a significantly less popular monarch on the British throne, it's not a given that the monarchy will continue to exist. That's why this story feels so huge. And at the heart of it is a Hunt villain. We don't know much about the specifics of the whole sordid affair, but we do know that East, East Texas's Jason Knopf knows at least some of the truth behind all of the speculation. You might think, who cares? But I think it is of paramount importance, if only because it proves <laughs> that there was always a Texas connection. Okay, she keeps going back to the Texas connection. But basically, um, Jason Knopf is getting the attention he clearly did not want. And it's obvious that people have taken notice of his presence in this documentary. And I think leading up to Thursday, it would not surprise me if we maybe heard about Jason Off being let go. Will he maybe be thrown on, under the bus by his bosses? The firm is not exactly opposed to doing that. Will they ask him to take the fall? But he himself is becoming the story. And the one thing that you should never do as the PR person, as the communications person, is become the story. Because who's going to do communications for you when you're the story? So Jason Knopf, you better run and hide. Run and hide, my friend. Right, let's go to your comments before we continue. Yes, Jason now works, works for Earthshot as well. They gave him a nice comfy role over there, over at Earthflop. Oh, thank you so much, Alan. Venon, thank you. Is it just me or does, just, or does Jason Off look <laughs> like the Rat King in that photo? Yes, he absolutely does. <laughs> I think they absolutely chose that photo um, on purpose. Uh, Maiden, so what you're saying is that he couldn't get a job in America, so he had to go abroad. Seems like it. Levy Hemmings, his mates with Wooten, yes. And it wouldn't surprise me if he met Dan Wooten in New Zealand. 
noted, whereas the fact that the reporter is doing this article in Jason North says a lot. Yes, people have noticed, right? Because he was the only Palace staffer who was highlighted. Um, Cho de Sisi, there's also former staffers of his last employment who were destroyed by his fraudulent behaviour. Do you have any information on that? Does anybody have any information on that? Please message me on social if anybody does. Right. Was there anything else that I wanted to mention? No, there was not. So we will end with your comments and call it the day. It's coming to almost an hour anyway. And those were the main highlights that I wanted to go through. Boy gonna be a long week folks facts and two cents hey 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 how you doing we're just finishing up actually <laughs> thanks for joining us um j9 hi everyone apparently jason often needs to be reminded of this the same people that you stepped on on your way up are usually the same people you trip on on your way down exactly exactly uh, legs they got rid of him he will be recycled. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Trader CC, all Noff is doing is spinning stories for William and Kate at all costs to bring his younger brother and family down. Yes. Well, Noff is no longer in the communications role. That's now Jason Lee. Oh, sorry, not Jason Lee. Um, Lee Thompson. <laughs> Where did I get Jason? <laughs> oh, no, Jason Lee is the gossip blogger <laughs> who told everybody that Queen died three months too early. No, Lee Thompson, getting them all confused now. Lee Thompson is a new communications guy, the one that was harassing Megan on the walkabout. Yes, Marcia Weir. Tina and Michelle always called out Jason. And actually, it was on the Sussex Squad podcast where I first heard Jason's name and I first came to know about who he was. And they were so ahead of the game, Tina and Michelle, because they called it. They said no one else could have handed over information to the Daily Fail and leaked other than Jason Off. So they called it before anybody else did. Right, he's going to get the last word of the day. I showed to CC, and I can't say I do, but it's been reported long ago. Baron read his dossier in New Zealand and connected Dan Wooten as well. Oh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, Levy Hemmings, William has everything, yet he's bitter and jealous. It doesn't make sense. Well, you know, um, how sad is it? You're going to be the future king and you're so jealous of your younger brother. And I think the reality is hitting him that he is becoming king at a time when royalty is going out of style completely out of style uh valerie jason lee was on piss morgan and it went down yeah i saw a small clip of that <laughs> oh oh dear uh, Marina, Rose Bush's buddies with this no-neck woman, no wonder. Yes, they walked into the Trump state dinner of all places together. You know, that picture of Rose and Kate with William in the background, I'm telling you now, that photographer, he knew when he took that photo. He knew. He knew, knew. That photo in the next few years is going to be worth so much more. Because when it finally comes out and it's official and everybody knows that William was running through the rose bushes, this is the photo that's going to be circulated on every cover. So I'm sure that photographer, whoever they are, is, is waiting for that big payday. They've already picked out the house in Dubai. They know what colour the Lamborghini is going to be. And they're just waiting for the news to drop and for the British media to finally talk about it openly and this will be the picture you see on every cover 
that one right there. Because doesn't that picture tell the whole story? Avon, the monarchy may crash before William gets crowned. I think it will. All right, he's going to get the last word of the day. All right, Vargas, we're going to give you the last word of the day. An envious spirit is never happy. Poor William, yes. And that is why we need to focus on our own goals, on our own happiness, and so that we don't envy others. And with that, I'm going to let you all go. Go enjoy uh, Baron or whoever else is on this evening, and we will catch up tomorrow. Okay? Ciao. Love's for beginners, ain't no witness It zips through your fingers, I ain't telling no lies So F all the drama, F the karma Just do what you wanna, promise you ain't got time Be you, and keep looking forward Don't you look backwards and you'll be fine Come through, and say what you need to Don't let them put you down All right. All right. Today, we're going to talk about how we can find out and how much we can find out and what it takes to get there. So first, we have to decide how much do we want to find out. So let's say in this case, I want to find out at a level of seven. OK, so I find that level on my graph and I come horizontally to my gradient line where it intersects with my gradient line. I'm going to come straight down to where it intersects with my fuck around line. That there is gonna tell me how much I have to fuck around to find out what I need to find out. See, as you can see, 
the more you fuck around, the more you're going to find out. And also, if you stay down here and you never fuck around, you'll never find out. So I hope this lesson is helpful. Thank you.